Hey guys, Jay here from War Fishing Outdoors. Great to have you all again. Today we are at the Mirror Blur Trail. In translation, what is that? Yeah. It's like the Blue Sea. So Blue Sea Trail, but it's known as Mirror Blur. It's probably one of my favorite, personally, uh, trails. And surprisingly said, it's due to, uh, is that a moose? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, the, the reason why I thought it was moose is the uh, majority of this area is covered in swamp. Uh, oh, okay, it's a bog. Sorry, my mistake. It's a bog. And uh, there's beavers and moose and deer. Uh, I don't know if you can see behind Ray here. That's a beaver dam. There's another one over there. And there is a lot of wild edibles. But because it is a protected area, we're not allowed to pick them. But I will show you some of them if we can find them. It's still winter, still spring. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it looks in summer. Yeah, that's right. We come, I filmed here in summer as well. So you could probably see some of the shots here. Wait, where is it? There. Here. So, anyways, we'll show you around. Beaver Dam, and if you can see, there's Joe's plane, and every outdoor YouTuber's plane. Won't be a outdoor video without a plane. So this here is one of my favorites. It Labrador key, and I'll just pick a leaf. You're not supposed to pick, but for showing purposes, Labrador tea comes in little leaves, and on one side is bright orange and fluffy, and the other side is usually green and looks like a rubberized plant. Now you got to be careful on uh, identifying your plants and making sure. Uh, what's wild edible and what isn't because just right beside it It looks like Labrador tea but on I'll pull a leaf here One side this is a rubber. I forget what it's called. It's rubber or something But on one side it doesn't have the bright orange and the fluff but the same looks the exact same way as a Labrador tea leaf. So this is the Labrador tea. This is the rubber plant. Here's the fuzz. And here's not the fuzz. All right. And one is poisonous and the other one isn't. Oh, thanks, Professor. It's a good point that one you could really see uh, this time of year because it's winter. But you could really see the difference between uh, the two properties of the leaf. But when you're in midsummer or uh, when the plants are, aren't so desolate looking, it's actually harder to tell apart. My first time, like here. Okay. This is the rubber plant and Labrador tea. Yeah, really and right orange look out of it. Yeah, you can really see the orange. But right here is the seeds. So mm -hmm. and it smells different. Yeah, you could uh, also smell the difference. So hope that helps. So this is why you gotta pay attention when you're foraging and uh, know your wild edibles before you eat them or try them out because we don't want you to get sick. That goes the same for uh, mushrooms and all that. Make sure you know 100% on what you're doing. Yeah, the blueberries are a little bit more up the way. So. 
Unfortunately, we can't pick any of this Labrador tea because it is a protected bog area. So, and she gets upset when I... I think that was the first time we came here and I didn't know that it was a protected area and I was getting excited about the Labrador tea and I started picking and she got upset going, what are you doing? And it does look so much different between winter and summer. The summer it's all green and lush. And uh, in winter, well, as you see, it's not so green and lush. All right, so right in here, these little, push these branches aside. These little branches down here are uh, blueberry branches. So because of the bog and everything, all this area here is, uh, is covered in uh, blueberries during blueberry season. Uh, this is, I believe, Spangler moss. And uh, Spangler moss has this theory of if you run water through it, uh, it has iodine in it and it uh, purifies your water for uh, making it more palatable and uh, they're able to drink it more. So also the deer eat uh, not that moss but that red stuff. The deer also eat that so that's why it's uh, for this trail it's important to stay on the trail and not run off because uh, you're dealing with habitats of wildlife that need this food for uh, this time of year. And then, of course, you got your pine as well, which, as a lot of you may know, you can make pine nettle tea. You can scrape the bark, get down to the cadmium layer, eat that, and uh, go from there. And this is a nice little spot because you got your pine nettle and you got your Labrador tea. So, and then nice hot drink in the middle of winter. You know, sit back and relax. So, anyways, there you go. Nice little games trail right there. Also, this isn't a very big trail. It's only like 0.5 of a kilometer, not even. So, we all know what this is. There you go, Professor. Yeah. <laughs> so we all know what this is. It's a uh, cocktail. Get away. And uh, there's a certain time of year, and it's a, a small time, like only a few days, where this stuff is yellow and you just tap it into a bag and it becomes uh, like a flower enhancer I guess you would call it and oh seriously <laughs> what you like that one and uh, as you know the fluff is good for fire tender and uh, also you can eat the cocktail roots and cocktail roots are all year this time of year, it's kind of hard to get into the roots, but in spring, the roots carry a bunch of starches. And of course, uh, I can't forget about the birch. Uh, these ones I haven't seen uh, any chaga on it. But birch trees usually have a chunk of chaga, and I'll explain to that a little bit later on. But it's usually a growth uh, on the birch tree, and it just basically looks like uh, somebody came and burnt uh, part of the tree. But once you take it off, it becomes uh, inside the chunk of chaga, it's uh, bright orange. So, but another thing you can do in uh, the spring is uh, just do a little slit, uh, just uh, past the, the main bark, 
and get the sap from the uh, birch, sort of like you do with uh, maple syrup from uh, maple trees, and it's create a energy drink. This would be silver birch. Yeah. So, and the difference between white birch and uh, silver birch is silver birch once you peel. The difference between silver birch and white birch is uh, silver birch gets all these uh, ribbony things as opposed to white birch where it comes off in more of a paper like. So we all know that birch is good for doing fires or helping to start your fire, birch syrup, uh, the chaga, so and there's some research done that chaga can also be uh, anti-cancerous, so I bet you didn't know that one, huh? No. So, yep, are you going to do, a lot of people like the fact that you you're a bird whisperer, what do you feel about that one? <laughs> Just seems the birds seem to like you. They, they know I want to eat the bird, so they sense danger off me, but with her, she just wants to be friends. So, okay, there's an icy section here, I'm gonna shut you guys off. We're nearing the end of the trail. It is a small trail. Like we said, it's only uh, just either a quarter of a kilometer or half a kilometer, something like that. So, very easy trail. Uh, near the end of the trail, there's a two parts you can go on, but it all leads into the same spot. You could take the little bit of a wooded area or more of the boardwalk area, but they all lead to the same place. Looks like we should have took the boardwalk. It's a little bit slippery, but uh, and there's no seeds, so she can't feed the birds this uh, this trip. Now, so walk over the side a little bit. Oh, <laughs> all right. So yeah. Anyways, we're gonna let you go. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And we'll catch you next time, alright? Stay safe out there.